Good day, ladies and gents. Welcome to this next talk. We're going to be looking today at enclosure fire dynamics, so the behavior of fire in a room. And we're going to start out looking at uh, the cross section in front of you where we've got some fuel package in the middle of the room there, and it's caught fire. Um, maybe it was the coffee machine that burnt out, maybe it's an electric fault, something has caught fire and is now burning. And as it burns, it's going to go through various stages from development through flashover to fully developed and then finally decay. And we're gonna describe all those phases, also looking at a time temperature graph, a heat release graph, and then looking at the different phases. So now, in our early stage, in the early development, this smoke is going to rise from the fire propelled by its buoyancy, hit the roof, and then we'll have ceiling jets horizontally as the smoke um, spreads out. So we end up with ceiling jets here. And as it burns, there is more than enough oxygen available. It's just a packet package burning in the room. So we've got air entrainment from either side of cooled air and the plume. So there's our smoke plume in the middle. And this then causes the hot layer at the top to build up. So there is our hot layer. And then at the bottom we have our cold layer of just the ambient temperature air around the fire. In this phase, if we have a look at the time temperature curve, what you see there is initially you have some ignition at ambient temperature and then a development as it gradually starts increasing with temperature. And this can be relatively quick. I mean, if it was a petrol bomb uh, thrown into a room, you'd go from ignition to flashover very, very quickly. Whereas perhaps if it's a cigarette sitting on a couch, it might take a period of time to develop through to the next stage of flashover. So here though we have from ambient and then it goes as it gradually spreads out from, from what's burning. Once we've gone through this phase then, well, which we're going to cause our, call our developing phase. There's our developing phase, and this is following ignition. And we need some form of spontaneous ignition or piloted ignition. And then from that we go through to the flashover phase. So here, once again, looking at our cross section of our room, our item is on fire in the middle of the room. It's probably started spreading to items around it as it's burning up. But at this stage, the smoke layer is descending and, and warming up. So now our smoke layer is deeper. It will be in the vicinity of around 500 to 600 degrees Celsius. And at this stage, what happens is, is you've got electromagnetic radiation. So you've got radiation down onto the floor. And the radiation from the hot layer causes everything to spontaneously combust. So when you get to a stage where the radiation is around um, 20 kilowatts per square meter, and this will depend on what's in the room, it might range up or down, that pretty much everything will spontaneously ignite. Even though our package may be in one corner of the room, the radiation causes everything within the room then to ignite, no matter where it is. And that's then associated with a very sudden and very rapid increase in temperature. So coming back to our time temperature curve, we then have from the ignition and developing phase, rapid temperature increase through to the developed phase. And this, as I said, we call flashover. And flashover can easily be observed. If you're standing looking at the building on fire, you'll see this distinct um, change. As everything is now engulfed. Flames start emerging from uh, dwellings. Because coming back to our cross section, initially you'll see once the smoke layer has developed low enough, you'll see smoke coming out the window once the smoke layer reaches the ventilation. But then also flames will start coming out when it reaches the flashover stage. Then continuing on, once flashover has occurred, we have full room involvement. So not only is our fuel package burning, but we have flames throughout the room. So pretty much everything is on fire. And what will also happen now is that the room becomes ventilation controlled, well, the, the burning rate. So it's only going to burn as fast as air can get in. And so what actually happens is, is that let's say you've got pyrolysis gases. So gases that are ready to burn. So they were a um, solid. They've been converted into a gas. They're ready to burn. There is insufficient oxygen within the room. So they actually go looking for, for air. And then what you can have is then the combustion actually occurring 
outside the windows, so you'll have flames emerging from the windows. Depending on how many windows there are and the shapes and size and where they are, the profile of air coming in and out of the room will change. Let's say we've just got a, a window here, so there's our window. We could have a profile that looks something like that with air coming in the bottom and then emerging out the top as flames are pushed out. If there are multiple openings, you may see that um, it could just be a pure um, flame plume coming out the door. And so once again, this is the full, fully developed phase. Um, the burning rate uh, re controlled by the amount of oxygen, so it's ventilation controlled, and it, it sort of flat lines, and there'll always be fluctuations in your temperature measurements, but we'll have a approximately constant um, uh, temperature in the room as it can't burn any faster. It might get a little bit up, a little bit down, depending on all that's going on. And then this is associated with a maximum heat release rate. So if we, if we simply use a simple T squared fire, so if this is now our heat release rate, it'll start at ignition and then as it ignites a, a waste paper basket or something like that, then you might have 100 kilowatts or 200 or 300 kilowatts. And then it will develop right through to a number of megawatts, 5, 10. I mean, you've got train carriages and other things, which may be 50 megawatts or higher. So this is a T squared fire. So it's a sort of T squared um, value up there. And then a uh, so the, the heat release rate is proportional to some constant times T squared and then flat lines as controlled by ventilation and then goes down. This is a very uh, simplified um, representation of the heat release rate but it gives a, a reasonable approximation of what's happening depending on various parameters. So that what your heat release rate might look like and then associated with that once the fully developed stage is finished, coming back to our time temperature curve, so there's our fully developed stage. Once that has passed and the material has been consumed, which is burning, will enter the decay phase, where then it will swap to being fuel controlled again, as then once again you don't have enough fuel to burn. And this is our decay phase here at the end, and it will gradually then go from fully developed and sort of die out as the, the last of the fuel is consumed, um, consumed, and that's the same thing as the um, decay phase there. And uh, that could be influenced, all this behavior could be influenced by various different um, items. For instance, in the room, if we have vents, and it, this allows hot gases to escape, that will delay the time to flash over and maybe even drop the temperature in the room as hot gases can escape and it doesn't build up as much. If you're in a very big room, so coming to our flash over, if you've got a tall atrium, and you've got a large distance there, you may have not enough heat to actually cause flashover and you may have a traveling fire or a localized fire rather. Same thing if you have a wide open space, the hot layer can't build up and it'll end up escaping so you won't end to flash over again. But once again, um, so you have ignition, then the developing phase, flash over with a rapid increase in tip temperature, then our fully developed stage, that's around 700 to uh, 700 degrees Celsius to 1000 degrees Celsius. Um, it could be higher than that depending on what hap what's happening in the conditions in the room and then it'll follow through the decay phase afterwards and then once again fully developed flames emerging from openings and uh, this fa these phases can be influenced by a number of things. For instance, if you had the fire brigade arrive and open the door, that could introduce air. And then you could have a backdraft scenario where suddenly the unburnt gases actually burn at where the the uh, ventilation is permitted into the room and those could cause increases or decreases in, in behavior as the, as the ventilation influences the fire dynamics. But hopefully that today should give you a good overview of the basics of enclosure fire dynamics, fire behavior and the transition from ignition through developed through flashover and then fully developed and decay afterwards with the associated behavior, time temperature curves and an approximate heat release rate. Thank you very much.